play up in your room. You can play, you can read the book. Welcome to Improving Parent-Child Relationships. In this episode, we'll be visiting with Karen and her four-year-old son, Ryan. Karen is trying to decide how much to do for Ryan and what will happen if she doesn't wait on him and remind him. As we begin, Karen is trying to get Ryan to drink his milk. Okay, I'm gonna go sharpen these for you, and you can start your picture. Look at them. They're great. Is that a good idea? Okay, I'll be right back. If you want to drink your milk, it's right here. You know what this is for? Milk. What's it for? Drinking. Yeah. As you left and said, drink your milk, I said, if you want to drink your milk, it's right here. <laughs> yeah. You were laughing when you said, drink your milk. What, what were you thinking about? When I said that just now? Yeah. Well, that's what my thought was when I put it in front of him, drink your damn milk. That's oh, that you were telling him what to do. I mean, that's what I, yeah, that's my thought, but I did say it, here's your milk if you'd like to drink it. Or oh. <laughs> so you're saying the way you feel inside, which is drink your milk, and I mean now, <laughs> is different than your milk is here if you'd love to have it. So it's the incongruity between how you feel and what you do. Yeah. So tell me, um, how important is it that he drink this milk? It's not very, it's not. but I just want to bring it back to his attention because I'd like him to, but if he doesn't, it's not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> what would happen if you just picked it's up... It's not a double message. <laughs> well, it sort of is, I mean, in a, in a way, because I think he could be confused by that because on the one hand, you really want this, enough that you pick up the glass and physically move it so he could get to it, but, but offer it to him as an opportunity. So I'm wondering, is, is he sometimes confused about what you expect and what's a choice and what you want? And the only way he can be clear is you're clear. So I have to be clear about that? Well, with yourself. I mean, I think that's who we start with. So um, I think the reason I think this is such an interesting example is it's, it, it's so focused on, is it important for us to decide what somebody else should do? I mean, is it important for you to decide that he would I, gu milk I guess I wanted to put the milk there because otherwise I'm going to, you know, I will take it away. I don't want it in our way. But I'm going to give you one last opportunity yeah. if you really want it. That's a, that's a good way to put that. So what would happen if you had removed the milk and just set it over in the sink or even put it down? I want my milk! Bring my milk back! Okay. That's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, and what would you do with that? God, I'm sorry. Here, have your milk. Yeah. Or say, well, it's gone now. Oh, my God. Then we would have <laughs> cried and screamed for hours. I, I guess what, I, what I'm asking you to think about is, can you ever disappoint him? Can you ever not be there and providing things in the native way that he wants? Well, now that's something I'll probably need to think about. Yeah, well, I think that is just something to think about, that, that you could actually see that he was done with the milk, act on that, pour it down the drain, and if that wasn't what he wanted, that would just be too bad. Life has some disappointment in it, and you would expect that he would handle that, um, because I think he could. You said, I'll have to think about that. I think you're exactly right about that, because life is full of 100 opportunities where you have to figure out is this a reasonable thing for me to be doing, or am I being a little bit too accommodating and reasonable and setting the person up to expect that I'll be able to anticipate his needs, take care of everything, provide everything, offer good choices? You know, you, you're, you're pretty quality, uh, which is good, but it may be harder on you than it needs to be. I, I don't know. You have to well, that's what that. I got to thinking about after he left. It's like, you know, that, that day went pretty good, and I thought, kind of hard for me jumping up and down all yeah. the time how could I make that what would I want to be different yeah and what you might want to be different is it would be a little easier for you yeah. and that's something you can kind of watch is just how much do you help him out here <laughs> say what you mean avoid confusing expectations with choices let children learn how to deal with disappointment 
Oh, you know what, Ryan? We have to make bruschetta for tonight. Are you going to help me? Did you hear my question? Yep. Are you going to help me or are you going to draw? I'm going to help you. Okay. As soon as I'm done drawing okay. this picture. Okay. Are you going to make your sign or are you going to make help me cut the tomatoes? You know. Were you going to help me, Ryan? Mm-hmm. I'm starting. You just said, maybe he didn't hear me. Maybe he didn't hear you what? I, I asked him three times. Maybe he didn't hear me that I'm starting the bruschetta now. What do you think? I think he heard. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I know he heard. <laughs> but it's kind of good to get you to re-invite him and re-invite him and re-invite well, him. sure. So backing up on, on this one in particular, the making of the bruschetta, is that something that you're offering because it's a nice offer to make? Well, I, or you really want him to do it with you? It's something that I like us to do together. I like him to be involved and we can work together. He can kind of see what chopping is and you know making something and we're cooking together. So it's an, a learning opportunity. It's a working together, cooperating. So it's a real plus that it is a learning opportunity, right? That always makes it nice. And it is something that you really would like to do with him. Yes. It's just not a yes. mere take time for training offer. Right. What do you think of telling him that? Because here it's, it's kind of offered is, I'm going to make the bruschetta, would you like to help me? And, and if that's where you were about it, that would be the perfectly honest and correct offer to make. But I sense from you that there's what more to What I should be it. saying, I'd really like you to help me. I think it'd be a fun thing to do together. I'd would you like to do this with you. I, I'd li I like the chopping together, the peeling together, whatever it is you love. So that he, he has the idea that this is just a little more than an obligatory offer, that you really would like to spend the time with him. Well, yeah. It's it fun, it plain. Instead of being down on the floor yeah. plain, this is plain in mommy's world. Of course, you you run the risk here of him <coughs> saying, "No, oh, thank you." Right, and then you kind of have you set yourself up because you you've already divulged that this is real meaningful to you and you'd love to do it with him. And then he says, "No, thank you." I mean, that could feel like rejection, but life has rejection. Yeah, now. I think I would throw up to okay. that. I think it would make a difference to him because if he's doing things for your attention, sometimes then I think the antidote to that is to know that he could fully have your attention with something you honestly would enjoy mm -hmm. doing with mm -hmm. him, uh, which I think would be nice. But aside from that, um, he doesn't answer. He's got like about three strategies, right? He doesn't answer. And so on the first flow, uh, when he doesn't answer, you go and check with him about whether he heard you. <laughs> Did you hear my question? Yep. Are you going to help me or are you going to draw? I'm going to help you. Okay. But now you think you did, so since we're all just so much wiser in foresight than we are in retrospect, what would you do again if you thought he didn't hear you uh, about any offer, not just this one? It probably happens more than once, right? If he doesn't answer, he doesn't respond. Did you, did you hear what Mommy's going to do? Are you, do you want to do that? What did Mommy say? What did Mommy say? Okay. What did Mommy say? Why would you would you make that second offer if you thought maybe he heard you? Habit? I, well, yeah. Why would I, you know, Partly. just... I, I don't think we're always thinking about what we're doing, but here's what I'm wondering, that, that if he did hear you, then to offer him a second and a third time sort of plays into the I can get you involved by re-asking and reminding and all that stuff. Um, so that would help us stop making an offer if we thought somebody's just fooling around with me. Uh, suppose he honestly didn't hear you and missed the experience. That yeah. would be so disappointing for both of us. Well, for you more than him. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but in life, uh, what happens when you aren't paying attention and you miss an experience? You listen better the next time. Yeah, I think so <laughs> because what I'd be considering in this kind of situation is what do you want him to learn? If, if you want him to learn that you will always give him some more opportunities, then I think his tendency would be to think, well, I don't really have to pay much too attention because 
you know, she's going to remind me three, four, five See, times. And, and I have problem. I know I do that, and I know that's something I don't want to happen. And right, you want him to good. listen the first time. But I think what you said earlier is that if you do pour the milk down the drain or you do go ahead with the bruschetta, then you're going to hear, wow, you know, I wanted to do this. And you're going to take the heat a little bit for that. And so you'd have to be prepared to say, that really is too bad. Uh, and I'll offer again sometime. And then you, you're not sorry. You don't fix it up. You don't make it right. You just trust that he would learn from that, that he probably does need to answer the first time. He probably does need to get going. He needs to listen. And he heard you anyway. Um, because he will watch what you do, not what you say. OK. So it makes sense, to, you know, in terms of him learning. Yeah. Well, I think it will be less wear and tear for you. I think that could be one of the things that wears you out, is that it doesn't take that much energy to ask somebody a time or two or just one time. It takes a lot of energy to go through six. Let children know what you enjoy doing with them. Unnecessary reminding teaches children not to listen. Okay, your job is to put the tomatoes in after I get them all cut up. That looks good. See, it's still out. And like that. Okay. Good. Okay, four. Clean up, clean up. Everybody clean up. Can you put these in the pantry for me, please? <coughs> what do we do after we make a mess in the kitchen? What do we do? Clean up. Yeah, that's right. the bottles. I think what you said just now is he saw that I wasn't going to do it. So then he did it. And it, I think it's because I have educated. We've taken time for training. So I knew That's that was good. something he could do. I knew that he's put other stuff away. So I, I had the confidence I knew he could do. Right. And if he didn't do it, I really didn't care anyway. I mean, it was like, you can do it. Yeah. So that may be an attitude you may want to adopt about more things. I mean, that there was also motivation there. Yeah. He wanted to play after. Mm -hmm. There was, you know, there was some bait out there that uh, we can play after we get things. And he was looking for, I, I think he was looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We tend to use bribes sometimes. What do you think about that? I don't like it. I mean, I like it, but I don't like it. I would rather he do things because he enjoys helping. And then, of course, as I say that, I think that might be a little much for a three-and-a-half-year-old. You'd like him to do whatever it is because he... He, and he gets some internal it. joy, internal confidence, and What if he gets esteem? no internal joy? I mean, can, well, well, then why would anyone do it? <laughs> I wouldn't. Well, in your life, it's a I, job. I imagine you do a lot of things that don't really rebound with internal joy, but they just need to be done. I mean, how much joy does he need to experience? I mean, Every moment of our life ah. should be joy, <laughs> shouldn't it? Yeah. Like cleaning up the kitchen, I, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean... Um, Maybe it would have been good in the beginning to say, uh, we're going to do this thing together, would you like to? And it involves doing the thing and cleaning up so that you kind of make it clear from the beginning what's involved here. Because then you're on better ground in the end to say, well, it was part of the job. 
Um, but I don't know that he has to be filled with joy doing it. I mean, I don't know that any child is filled with joy when they're picking up toys or they're, they're doing kind of other tasks, things that need to be done. But if you're committed to joy, then all he has to do to unseat you a little bit is to point out how something isn't joyous. And then you got a problem because if you're supposed to make things joyous and, and they aren't, should he have to do them? I don't know, what do you think? I think you like quality and joy. I do. Maybe one of my goals is to, you know, try to make work fun because we have these chores right. to do in life and yeah. if we can look at them from a... See, I think that's good. I mean, I wouldn't want to see you change that because I think the, the amount of energy in having things pleasant and joyous and fun, I mean, all that's so in the right direction. And there's a point at which you would probably ask yourself, when is enough enough? Right. And do, does everything have to be quality and fun and a learning experience every minute? Or I can just say, the kitchen needs to be cleaned up before anything else happens, fun or not. Right. And I think I do that some. Yeah. Yeah, and that's good because, because we wouldn't want him to think you're hooked on that point. Help children learn that some things just need to be done, even if they're not enjoyable. The consequence of not responding is that opportunities are missed. Reminding is less effective than taking action. When Anna comes over, Mommy and Anna are going to play, and we don't want to be interrupted. We want to play our games. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So you're going to have to play by yourself without interrupting Mommy. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Yeah. Cool. I like this. So I think here you're pretty clear about what it is. And, and I think you even express to him some confidence, you know, when you ask him, can you do that? And he says, yeah. Hi. Hey. Hi, Jake. Oh, you haven't seen this. No. What are you going to do while Mommy and Anna play dominoes? And I will. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, I got a great idea. How about I play, too? Well, you know what, Ryan, remember I said this was going to be just on a mice play date and you get to play by yourself. No. Yeah. No. You were going to play up in your room. No. No. Well, you know, I'll let you play as long as you're playing gentle, but if you get... Hey, it's at a zero. Ryan. If you're going to sit up here and play with me, you have to play gentle. If you knock things over, then you're done. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's. Come on. A little wishy-washy, huh? <laughs> well, in the sense of being confusing, because I think what you'd said is, is before Anna came. He had to go play with He has himself. to go play, and now he's ready to renegotiate the arrangement for what he set the timer, and he's decided that... <laughs> Maybe he he'd wants rather to be, be there than not. So here you are at this, this crossroads where you have to decide, did you mean what you said in the first place? Or are you going to kind of renegotiate something with him? I think I, I think my intent was to have no conflict. So I think I, okay. I lose my backbone. See, that, that's really important here because I think that's a good guess on and, your part. And, you know, I, it's like trying to be nice. You know, yeah. it's like, okay, fine. If you, well, but there it, is somebody here watching. I mean, you know, and, and you have company and all that. Well, no, but I would have done, I do that anyway. And, and really, I, he could play. I mean, I really don't care if he plays with us, if he plays nice. But I know in the past, he'll start knocking over things. Mm -hmm. And if he wants to stay and play with me, that is fine. Because, you know, it's a great place to learn and educate again about numbers and matching. And, yeah. and, and that's fine. Well, let's suppose that you truly felt that way that it's okay if he plays so long as he's nice, then I would think the offer up front would be different. Okay. It would be honest coming over, we're going to play dominoes, you're, you're welcome to play so long as it goes well, or whatever, however you describe that, that the pieces stay on the table, whatever it is. Uh, I mean, that requires a lot of forethought. Well, it does, but I think the reason uh, that, that you want to be clear about what the offer is <coughs> in the first place is so you can really follow through consistently because what happens here is 
I'm going to play with on it. You're going to be in your room, and then now as soon as he she renegotiates, gets here, he renegotiates, and so he gets to make the rules. Right, and so what I think he gets out of that is, you didn't know what you meant in the first place, but even if you did, I can talk you out of it. And if I just kind of, you know, resist or tell you no or be a problem or make you afraid that. I'm going to be so much trouble you wouldn't want to take me on. That's the conflict thing. You say, I'm afraid there'll be conflict. You're absolutely right, there will be. But oh well. You know, life has a fair amount of conflict in it. And you certainly wouldn't want him to think that you were afraid of conflict. Because then all he would have to do to get you to back down at any time is just hint that there's going to be some. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because what if there were conflict? You'd handle it. You're perfectly capable of handling conflict. You, you handled it two or three times here already. He's on the chair. You pick him up. You take him away. You can do this. It might not be your favorite thing to do, but you can certainly do it. The more he has input up front into the decision about Anna's coming over, what are we going to do, how, rather than just, you know, we're going to do this and you're going to do that, and it'll go better because he'll have a say. Okay. He's trying to have a say. He just he doesn't know how to go about having that say and and if you're confused about how he's going to have a say, he's going to be confused too. So the criteria is you can have a say if it's a peaceable discussion. You can't have a say in a power struggle. Okay. Because I'm not going to do it. It's real complicated, isn't it? I'm exhausted oh. just thinking about what Let's I have watch to do. The visit here. Involve children in deciding what will happen. Act on limits without reminding. Don't give in out of fear of conflict. All this noise up here. I hear lots of noise. Uh, we don't go up here. Come on, you know that. You know that. You don't belong on your shelves. Remember what I said, Anna? Now you're going to play by ourselves, okay? You know there's no climbing on there. Would you like to bring some of those books downstairs and read them? Yeah, but that's too much. Well, just bring one of them or two of them, and you can read them downstairs and look at the pictures. We can read them, and then we can take them right back upstairs. Mm -hmm. Put them over on the bookshelf over there where the reading spot is. That would be a good place for them. I right. wrote it, huh? Just wonderful. <laughs> well, half the time he does things, and I'm supposed to, you know, I, and I just have to turn around and laugh. Tremendous ingenuity. You, you've got to admire that. In him. I do. I love it. Yeah. yeah, and it is. It but is then that, you know, I mean, they're, you know, he's just so pitiful and so sad. Yeah. I mean, but I see having lifelong trauma here now because he thinks his mother no. locked him in his room. You didn't lock him in his room. I know. I didn't. <laughs> Right. I don't think so. I think what he has is a tremendous sense of theater. You really don't want to be in a power struggle with somebody like him because look at the ingenuity and resourcefulness and energy and creativity and I mean you will not win. <laughs> so don't even go there. <laughs> they think you are doing the right thing. I mean you, you, you 
picked him up, you take him out of there. I mean, I'd have probably done it sooner. I mean, I think you were a little, little patient, patient with that? don't you think? I mean, it, I think the, the coming down at first and throwing the books down really is an act of defiance. Oh, right? yes. I mean, oh, yes. So, so that was a real decision point where you, you might have just decided then back upstairs because then the things that happened with, with the books and crying because you put them away. And yet it's very reasonable. If somebody's being abusive of something, you put it up. And here's an example where he didn't like something you did, <coughs> but what you did was very reasonable. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. And then he comes around to kind of complain that he really didn't throw them down. Someone pushed him. He's got all this <laughs> stuff going on. Uh, and so finally you decide, well, he's out of here. Well, and that's another thing. I mean, he is doing that these days. Is It's like, I, I mean, he'll throw something or do something. And I didn't do it. I yeah. just saw you do it. Don't lie to me. I mean. Let's see. And there you go right there because what he's saying is argue with me about it. And, you know, he'll have all kinds of answers yeah. because he's pretty creative and <laughs> that wouldn't be something you'd want to discuss yeah, I mean the, the dynamics of getting somebody to admit something are relatively worthless you, you know he did it he knows he did it what's there to talk about yeah. um, but acting on it and I, I th like I said I, I think you are doing the right thing because what you want him to learn probably is that I'm not doing this and he will learn the extent to which you tolerate it by how soon you intervene so, you know, life has a lot of repetition built in that you'll have another chance. So <laughs> is it when he drops the first book or wh is it when I have to put them up and he kicks up a fuss or is it when he comes around to the table and makes a counteroffer? But my guess would be that your, your interest would be in closing that up so that he has less going on with you. Take action the first time a reasonable rule is broken. Be unimpressed with children's displays of drama. Is there anything particularly that you think, this would be a pretty good focus for me if I were just going to kind of pick a thing and mainly focus on it, what would it be? Being, being more clear up front with what I expect and then following through with, with what I said clearly, uh -huh. exactly, yeah. instead of having that wishy-washy, you know. Shift kind of. Yeah. Thing. You may have a few situations that aren't as joyous in the immediate sense and there may be a little conflict. But in the long run, I think your goal will be achieved because if what, what you want is a joyous, harmonious, pleasant relationship, the more of the power struggles and things you take out of it, the more it'll be that way. It's just in the short run, it might not feel that way every minute. You can use these principles and skills to improve your relationships with children. Here are some of the main principles from this episode. Is that a good idea? Avoid confusing expectations with choices. Don't let children undo reasonable decisions. Don't give in out of fear of conflict. Be unimpressed with children's sense of drama.